Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reports that Fisher 8 continues to erupt with a full channel flowing to the ocean in one major entry. Fissures 6, 15, and 16 continue producing minor spattering. Trade winds are forecasted to return today, pushing fog to the southwest. As of yesterday, 1,015 people have registered with the Federal Emergency Management Agency for assistance either online, by phone, or at the Disaster Recovery Center. Additionally, the Small Business Administration has handled 329 service requests from homeowners and or businesses at the Disaster Recovery Center. These are among the many resources that are available to residents of Hawaii County who suffered damage or losses from the Kilauea volcanic eruption and recent earthquakes. The Disaster Recovery Center is open daily from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and is located at the Keao High School Gym. The Hawaii Department of Health is holding a volcanic ash and fog community meetings today at Waikoloa Elementary and Middle School Cafeteria beginning at 6 p.m. We are on watch 24 hours a day for your safety. This is your Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency. Volunteers here at New Hope Church have been working since 3 in the morning to prepare hundreds of hot meals for evacuees staying in shelters in both Ka'au and Kohoa. Put a corn in a small one. It's not the time to preach. It's not the time to push church. Oh. It's about loving on people. Inside the kitchen at New Hope Church in Hilo, volunteers are whipping up something unusual. When you guys go to the shelter, you're going to realize the need. A hot home-cooked meal. Likely the first one some eruption evacuees will have eaten in days. These people lost their homes, so they don't get to just walk into their fridge and open it up and take something out and cook whatever they want. They're just eating whatever people are dropping off. That's why every Thursday for the past six weeks, these parishioners have been up before the sun. So we um, open up at 3 a.m. We start prepping at 3.30. Providing comfort through their cooking. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our volunteers, they come in and they're all joyful. Some people love to cook, some people just want to do dishes. Today, they'll prepare, deliver, and serve close to 1,000 meals. That's the food that they have prepared with their hearts, guys. At the shelter in Ka'au, our cameras focused on the food to respect the privacy of those who were there. People, they're really thankful. As this simple gesture provided a temporary escape, binding this tight-knit community even closer together. As long as it's going on, as long as there's people in the shelter that need food, we're committed to doing this. On Hawaii Island, Allison Blair.
silica there. So my next question is, what is the composition of volcanic material? I know you have magma and you also have ash, rocks, things like that. What are the composition of these materials? Okay, so typically a, a volcano that's erupting in Hawaii will erupt basaltic lava. And that's a lava with about, say, 50% SiO2, maybe 12% iron oxide, maybe uh, three or four percent titanium oxide, maybe uh, 12 to uh, 14 percent aluminum, maybe six percent magnesium oxide, and maybe on the order of two percent sodium and potassium combined. And then the other thing that these magmas have within them is dissolved gaseous compounds like sulfur, chlorine, CO2, and water. When we're talking about uh, the gas coming out of a volcano, how dangerous is this volcanic gas? It can be, for instance, in the case of Hawaii, we have sulfur dioxide being emitted. You also have CO2 that is being emitted. And uh, literally at the fissure vents, the gases are coming out at roughly uh, 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. So not only are they poisonous, they're at extremely high temperature. So being exposed to them is, is not a good idea. Since we've made the connection between uh, volcanic eruption and tectonic activity, in other words, do volcanic eruptions cause earthquakes or vice versa, or earthquakes causing volcanic eruptions? There's been only a few cases where you can cite a large magnitude earthquake as having possibly driven a volcano into eruption. And by uh, this, I mean like the 1960 uh, eruption of uh, Cotopaxi volcano. It literally had a magnitude 8 earthquake almost directly below its summit. However, one of the things that has to happen for a volcanic eruption to occur is you, whenever you break rocks in the subsurface to move magma, you're generating a lot of small earthquakes. As, as the magma moves to the surface. And if you have sensitive seismometers distributed, say, within a 15-mile radius of the volcano summit, you'll record all those small magnitude earthquakes. They're usually smaller than magnitude 2. But they tell us something is happening at the subsurface beneath that volcano. And as such, an increase in the number of small magnitude earthquakes beneath the volcano is often a herald that a volcanic eruption, you know, might be coming in the future. In the lower east rift zone, activity continues with little change. Lava from the Fisher 8 fountain continues to reach heights of about 175 feet as measured during the overnight hours. The lava pulses, sending a shower of hot lava fragments over the rim of the cinder cone, filling it slightly higher and wider. The lava exits Fisher 8, traveling at a rate of about 17 miles per hour. Uh, it slows down significantly toward the quarry to about 2 miles an hour and significantly less than that at the ocean entry. At the ocean entry, lava is entering in the southern part uh, near the vicinity of vacation land, producing a robust steam and lace plume. The lava has now created a lava delta in seaward that is approximately 380 acres in size. Up at the summit, subsidence continues with the withdrawal of magma at depth. The popular Overlook parking area has now slumped into the crater. Uh, this area was closed since 2008. 
Earlier this week, crews installed temporary GPS stations to track the rate of subsidence at the caldera. And today, a UAS a team, a drone team, will be up trying to take pictures, weather permitting, of the changes that have occurred in the summit to produce digital elevation models that will help characterize and track the extensive substance. and resignations at Hawaii's public schools, the head of the teachers' union says it all comes down to money. 
Our Ashley Nagaoka joins us with more. Thank you, Kiahi. DOE employment records show more than 400 teachers resigned and left Hawaii during the 2016-2017 school year. That's an increase of 84% in resignations since 2010. That number didn't surprise Carrie Rose, a Wailua elementary school teacher who is getting ready to move to Colorado for another teaching job. The 34-year-old mother of two says she always dreamed of raising her family here in Hawaii, but on a teacher's salary, she she says it's extremely difficult. It's sad that if I want to stay here, I have to choose something other than teaching, and I don't want to choose something other than teaching because that's that's my passion. That's what I'm meant to do. We've got to be able to increase teacher salaries, give more incentives to go into teaching. Otherwise, if this trend continues, there may be a day where we have 2,000 classrooms that don't have teachers. Rosen Lee says he was shocked by the latest DOE numbers. He says teacher vacancies are up 51% from 2011. The number of unlicensed teachers who did not meet state qualifications rose 63%, and the number of in-state education program graduates dropped 29%. Now, HSTA hopes voters will approve a plan to tax residential investment properties to help fund public education. It will be on the ballot in November. It's opposed by the counties who rely on property taxes and the real estate industry, which says it could raise rents for local residents.